Hey, I'm Scott Belding, and you're watching Art Beat. Come with us while we discover the arts in Contra Costa County. Let's meet the artists who make this a beautiful place to live. This is brought to you by the Arts and Culture Commission of Contra Costa County. Hi, we're here with Ananda Ray, the Artistic Director of Moving Arts Dance. It's great to be with you. Thank you. I think what most viewers are going to want to know as it relates to artists is, where do your inspirations come? I'm familiar with your work, uh, Beauty from Darkness, um, Last Breath, Beyond the Picket Fence, Island of Tears, all of these things have kind of the darker emotions. You want to talk about that? For me, the work is about the human experience. And it's actually about finding a balance for the human experience. As an artist, I feel like our job is to change the world. Our job is to show the things and bring voice to the things that are going on in our communities and in our culture. And one of the things that I see is that darkness is shunned. Darkness, in my experience in the American culture, is told to go away. People, if you're crying, they'll say, it's okay. If you're upset, they'll say, it's going to be all right. But it's not. You have to express that. And that's what my works do. They give voice to the darkness so that people in the audience can feel understood. So that carries over into what you have developed is expressive movement processing. And that's what you teach. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, that's my great passion. Expressive movement processing combines dance therapy with authentic movement, improvisation, and processes from the choreographic um, skill that's required to be a choreographer, the elements of choreography, especially time, space, and energy, and how they combine to create an emotional expression. It's really important to me that expression be authentic on the stage. So if I have a dancer and I'm asking her to be sad and she says, which is actually often re re desired, I guess, of some performers, that it's not true, but that it's bigger than true. Well, for me, I want it to be true because the audience can feel that. They can sense it. So if I ask her to be sad and she goes, and she drops into that place that's really and honestly sad, the audience can feel it. They can sense it. It's almost as if... They can taste emotions. They're reading the body language of the performers. They know when it's pretend and they know when it's real. And that's what I want. So I think what you're saying is you require your dancers to be technically proficient. And they, they study ballet. They study modern. Of course. You bring those forms together and you combine them. But it's that authentic emotion that makes the difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. A dancer that can extend their leg up to their ear is beautiful to watch and I want that dancer for my choreography but if that's all they can do is extend their leg up to here and there's nothing going on and it means nothing then in the audience I'm going to say wow she's a great performer and I'm going to sit there and applaud and then I'm going to go home and I'm going to say okay let's go get some pizza <laughs> great tricks yeah exactly <laughs> but if that dancer in extending her leg to her ear has an expression that brings me to a place emotionally and that informs me about the rest of the dance and that dance makes me think about something. I'm going to go home and I'm going to talk to the people and I'm going to say, wow, I didn't really ever think about that before, but that part of that dance made me think about this. That's so important. Your company's had um, some amazing travel experiences that been I think... Lucky. Most companies don't get to do, but you've been to six countries, uh, 60 different cities, yeah. um, Belarus, Poland, France, Germany, Scotland. Yeah, and all over America. We've been very lucky. So I can probably ask you this question. How do we all compare as people? Mm. You know, the American Embassy hired us to come over. They, they sponsored our tour to Belarus, and we were there as cultural ambassadors. And as the cultural ambassadors, our job was to befriend the people of Belarus, to make a truce between us through the use of the arts. And so we took our dances, which express true human emotions, and we took these concerts, 
And the way that the Belarusians reacted was amazing. And what I discovered in the course of the tours was that we're not at all different. I mean, our cultures are different. And there's a big difference in how their culture interacts with each other and how our culture interacts with each other. And we're not the same kinds of people in that way. But then you get to the core, which is what the dances express. It's the core of humanity, the core of being human. And we're the same. And they would stand up and give us every single show we got a standing ovation. One of the shows, the standing ovation, was 10 minutes long because they knew that we were the same. They got it. And you got to teach expressive movement processing in Belarus. Yeah, that was really exciting, too. I worked with dancers, and I also worked with actors. And we shared the core. We couldn't speak the same language. I had an interpreter. But from the core of movement, we were the same. Oh, well, that's the essence of what you described, that dance is nonverbal. Right, exactly. So it's about communicating through body language, which is universal. Yeah. At the beginning of any lecture I do, or anything that's a lecture demonstration or any demonstration of this, I'll tell people in the audience, I'll come in and I'll say, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> and then I'll ask the audience, well, what did I just communicate to you? And they'll say, nothing. And I'll say, well, did I communicate that I was excited to be here? And they'll say, no. And I'll say, why not? And they'll say, well, because your body wasn't excited. It's, ah, you believed my body, but not my words. Aren't words the most important thing? They think for a minute, and the answer comes back, no. They're all, everyone, all of us, we're body language experts. And that's what dance is. So I know that you are a dancer who when you were young, uh, found dance, and you have said that it changed your life. And you were a lot with kids. Want to talk about that? Yeah. Yes, I do. When I was younger, I was uh, raised in a, you know, they call them dysfunctional families. All of us have dysfunctional families of one kind or another. Um, my father was an alcoholic, and it was very difficult thing because we were taught not to talk about it. So we were taught all these feelings to push inside and push inside, don't talk about it, which is the same as happens to a lot of people. But when I found dance, I, I was kind of going crazy and I started experimenting with drugs and this is in high, you know, in, in high school, by the time I was in high school, I started experimenting with drugs and I tried ballet when I was a younger child and I loved it. But my family didn't have enough money, so I didn't get to dance. And I was so sad. But I got to do PE in school, and so I had my movement. I loved movement. I had that met for a while. When I was in high school, I finally got to take a dance class, a real one, a modern dance class. And we learned to choreograph. And I choreographed my first dance, and it was about a, a drunken person. And um, it healed things for me that I couldn't have healed by speaking them, because I didn't know how to speak it, because I wasn't taught how to speak it. And so from then on, I was hooked. I have to choreograph. I have things that need to be said that heal me and heal the people in the audience who watch it and the people who work with me. It's a healing force. And so I want to make sure that it's available. You know, in, our, in, in my teaching, I make sure if a student comes to me and they can't afford it, they're going to stay there anyway. And as I work with these kids, I know that dance is going to form them to be really well-rounded, artistic, tolerant, creative-thinking people. And those are the kinds of people that we need to change the world. We don't want people that are in a box. <laughs> you know, if we're going to make change, if the world's going to be a better place, people have to be creative thinkers. Very admirable. It's beautiful. It's necessary. I know we're unfortunately only going to be able to scratch the surface of as it relates to you and your career and all that you've accomplished. But um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to leave the viewers with the opportunity to see some of the segments of some of your really beautiful work. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Ah, thank you.